Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. An amazing sight rolling through southeast Michigan tonight. We'll take you along for the ride and tell you the story behind the holiday train. A Local 4 viewer steps up in a big way to help a woman beaten after a car accident. Why it's all about giving this season. Also, this hate-filled handwritten note arrived at an Islamic center in Ann Arbor calling Muslims vile and filthy people, and that's the mildest of what's in the letter. Good to have you with us tonight for Local 4 News at 11. That letter arriving today, but it is the same one that has been sent to mosques in other areas. At least four other states reported receiving the letter. At evening prayers, it was addressed tonight, and the letter itself is on the way to the postal inspector. Mara McDonald live tonight as the, at the Islamic Center of Ann Arbor. And uh, Mara, this letter is postmarked from California. It sure is, Devin, but the sender thought they'd be clever by putting a local return address on there from Ann Arbor. Clearly, it's a fake. Let me show you what they got. Here's the envelope. Please take a look in the corner. The sender felt the need to put a Christmas wreath stamp on the handwritten letter, which is addressed to the children of Satan. And yes, it gets worse from there. We do know there have been letters that have been sent to Islamic centers in California, Massachusetts, as well as in Alabama. This is the first one that's been received like this in Michigan since the election of uh, President-elect Donald Trump. The letter also refers to Trump as the new sheriff in town, claiming that Trump is going to, quote, do to you Muslims what Hitler did to the Jews. The, the nice thing is, though, and, and the, the really hopeful thing is, uh, for every one that we received, um, negative, we received probably, I don't know, 20, 30 uh, letters of support. The mosque doesn't hide these letters from its members. This one in particular suggests the writer not only has some poor penmanship, but sure appears unhinged as well. Frankly, you know, I feel bad for them. Um, they may not know Muslims. The center says it has to handle threat letters like this responsibly, but not live in fear. We have to keep on fighting and stand up for our rights. Uh, we're Americans and we aren't going anywhere. Even if people are talking about wanting us to go to ovens, we're going to stay here and stand up for our rights and be dignified people just like all other Americans. Back here alive, the congregation or the members here at the Islamic Center tell us that these kind of letters are not typical for them. Uh, and that they have always felt very welcome in Ann Arbor. Devin, Kimberly, back to you. Well, Mara, what, if anything, is the mosque there doing to adjust its security procedures because of what has happened here? Well, I asked that, Kimberly, and they say they're not really adjusting anything. They already have security in place here. And I told them, I said, you know, do you have to take this kind of letter seriously? And they didn't necessarily say seriously, but they did say responsibly. And mm -hmm. they already have security in place, and the security stays. Yeah. And hopefully you, the authorities can get, you know, down yeah. to the bottom of who did it. So, exactly. all right, Mar, we appreciate it. Other news tonight, there was a sea of American flags outside the St. Clair Shores funeral home where the public was able to pay their respects to Sergeant Colin Rose. His funeral is set for tomorrow. And earlier today, hundreds of people passed through Ford Field for a memorial in his honor. Outside, it was a powerful scene as police officers and their canine partners lined up to go inside. Rose was killed last week while on duty at Wayne State. He was a canine officer and his own canine, there he is, Wolverine, attended today's memorial. 24 hours ago, Teresa Long was taking punches to the face from a woman who became enraged after an accident that she wasn't even involved in. Well, tonight, Teresa Long is overcome with emotions thanks to a generous deed from a local four viewer. Jermont Terry is live with how she's stepping in to help. Hi, Jermont. Kimberly, we know there are generous people around, but how many people are willing to take a title to a car and sign it over to someone in need? Tonight, you meet a local four viewer doing just that. I thought this was going to be the pickup to get myself back together. It's safe to say Teresa Long had some bad luck this week. That's Teresa getting attacked by a woman after she got into a car accident. Teresa was banged up from the attack and this wreck, which totaled her car. I have no transportation to my job now. I just got offered a full time job. I don't know what to do. Teresa talked about her shock on Local 4 News at 6. Minutes after seeing Teresa's plea, Mary Slavin stepped in. I just felt her pain at that moment. 
You see, Mary and her son had been trying to sell this 2004 Cavalier for a year now. Lowering the price and lowering the price, and it's just gotten to the point where it's like, you know, just make somebody have a nice Christmas or something. Mary called me and decided to change Teresa's streak of bad luck. That little things make a difference, but bigger things sometimes make a bigger difference. And this is a big thing. Mary decided to give Teresa this Cavalier. I said a prayer the other day, that's all I can say, and I heard a voice in my mind that says, if you want to be blessed, be a blessing. I snapped some images and passed along the good news to Teresa while at the hospital treating soreness from the attack and crash. And she wants to give you this car. Oh my God, thank you so much. This car may be 14 years old and sure it has more than 140,000 miles, but for Teresa, it's a lifesaver. Despite this vicious attack, this proves people do care. There is love, there is peace, there is understanding. Thank you so much. I didn't know what I was going to do or how I was going to do it. Now she can get better and also have a car to continue on to work. Mary said, well, if Oprah can give away new cars, why can't she give away one old used car? Something to think about, Kimberly. <laughs> a, a, a fantastic gesture by, by uh, Mary, as you said, Jermont. I'm wondering, though, about the woman in the video that was doing the punching. When we talked to you at 6 o'clock, you said she wasn't even driving that other car. Is she, what's, what's going on with her tonight? Well, she was arrested, is um, being detained by Detroit police, and Teresa is looking to still press charges to the fullest extent of the law. Again, that woman was called to the scene by the people in that car that was in the crash, and then she just became irate, according to Teresa on scene. So that's where she stands in all of this. Still unbelievable to look at that video, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jamat. We appreciate it. Way to go, Mary. Yes. Isn't that great, that's the way coming through fantastic, like that? Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. All right, the search continues for three men who fired shots at Detroit police officers on the east side. Officers were patrolling a neighborhood near John R. and State Fair when they heard the gunfire. The police chief is calling it an ambush. Now, no one was hurt. Investigators, though, are looking for several main men seen on surveillance cameras in the area around the time of the shooting. One man is seen running away. Uh, the silver sedan in the parking lot might also have been involved. And police are also looking for a man who was seen riding a bike in that area. Lifetime Fitness members on alert tonight after two women were groped in the parking lot of the Canton location. Two separate incidents happened Monday night at the Lifetime Fitness on Haggerty. The women were on their phones at the time when they were approached from behind and then inappropriately touched by a man who ran off when they screamed. You should feel safe wherever you're at, especially it's just, you know, I feel like Canton's such a safe city, but um, you know, they're right in the world we live in. You, you should be aware. You really should. It's sad, but you should. Yeah, Canton police remind everyone to be aware of their surroundings and park in well-lit areas. Thousands of people line the railroad tracks down river for a festive start to the holiday season. You can see it from our airport cam there. That's uh, quite the view, isn't it? And Tim Pamplin had the night cam there for all the fun. A wonderful event. This is the 18th year of the Canadian Pacific Railroad's holiday train. Families arriving, donating food to a local food pantry. It really has become a family affair. Look at this. Five generations of the Tyra family from Taylor. Great grandmama says she wouldn't miss this for the world. Well, earlier tonight, there's a train. It rolled into Windsor on its transcontinental trek. At each stop, the railroad gives money and donations to local charitable organizations, both in Canada and here in the United States. As the youngsters waited, bundled up, I'm hearing about 5,000 people turned out to see this spectacle. And here we go. Here's the moment they've been waiting for. Here it comes, the Canadian Pacific holiday train, spreading cheer wherever it goes. And look at some of these faces. I asked someone here, what do they think's on the train? The only answer is all of Santa's toys for the good boys and girls. And look, there's the man himself in the caboose. So that's the scene, a jolly good scene in Allen Park tonight with a night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. Isn't that cool? And you know how much kids love a train. A good so. Oh, no doubt. And it's, it's, uh, especially at Christmas, it's <laughs> kind of a Polar right. Express That's going right. really Pretty cool. cool. It might not be cruel, but it's definitely unusual. See the strange way one community is hoping to entice drunken drivers to stay off the road. Also, right place, right time. Two officers risked their lives to save a man from a burning car with no time to spare. Hey there, Ben.
Devin, we've got some sprinkles showing up on Fort Life radar right now. They're all in the western part of the state, but will they be over here by the time we head to work in the morning? Scientists uncover the germ hotspots in local college apartments. We tried to keep a holistic view and an open mind, but there were some, some surprises in the study for sure. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, see why these places could be a problem in your home, too. Coming up on Thursday on Local 4 News Today, believe it, tomorrow is the first day of December, so it's time to get your holiday shopping done. Yes, we're going to have the best items to buy in December. Plus, grab the hot glue gun. Find out why it could solve several of life's little annoyances. That's coming up during Thrifty Thursday at 5 a.m. And, of course, we have Brandon on weather, Kim on traffic, always on the fours. Join us from 4.30 to 7 a.m. We'll see you Thursday morning. College life is often a person's first time with a responsibility for keeping their dorm or apartment clean, but that can prove to be a challenge. Right, if the bugs are there, it means poop got there, which means you didn't clean it. In good health, when surveyed, most people say the areas that are the germiest are the ones touched the most. But as Dr. Frank McGeorge found, there are much ickier areas in a college apartment. Icky, the medical term <laughs> uh, from the Latin ickius collegius. <laughs> knowing where those spots are is the first step to fixing the problem. And that's assuming that knowing leads to the fixing. But remember, college stress usually includes all-nighters, studying, long days filled with classes, and of course, an active social life, which does not really leave a lot of time to keep up with cleaning. And here's the result. Sinks filled with dirty dishes or bathrooms that no one has paid attention to in months. Places that actively grow gobs of germs. The organisms we found there generally were indicators of uncleanliness. Dr. Jesse Miller is a microbiologist at NSF International, an independent testing and certification organization. Generally, it's commonly thought that high touch areas uh, have a lot of germs and are a very germy surface, so your phone, um, places where you sit and you put your arm on an armrest or, you know, the door handles. But they wanted to find out for sure, so they went into college apartments and collected samples from those areas and more, including kitchen areas and bathrooms. We tried to keep a holistic view and an open mind, but there were some, some surprises in the study for sure. The germiest six areas were dish sponges, the shower drain, kitchen sink drain, shower head, kitchen faucet handle, and coffee maker. So that's kind of where we found most of the germs were in the more wet places, not the high touch areas. The sponge in your kitchen was the germiest site. It, it's always wet. It harbors, harbors moisture and bugs are 90 percent water, just like us. There was trillions of organisms on the sponges. It was really it was really gross. The types of germs found on sponges included coliforms, E. coli, yeast and mold. While the specific coliforms or E. coli might not kill you, their presence is relevant. It's a fecal indicator. It tells you that somehow feces or something feces-like, it may not be from you, it could be from a bird or a dog or a cat, is there, which means you didn't clean it. The areas that grew germs the easiest had a few things in common, particularly moisture and a food source, like actual food on a sponge in the kitchen drain or even dirt and skin cells in the case of the shower drain. The NSF study found something different in shower heads, more yeast and mold. Now, the reason shower heads create a different concern is that as water comes out, germs growing inside are also put into the air. Once you aerosolize a pathogen, you bring it into your body, as you suggested, if you're immunocompromised, it can take hold and cause disease. Although most of the organisms were not directly harmful, there was one exception. We found the MRSA on the countertop during our study, during our, we'd swab a 10 by 10 area, and we found it on that. Now that doesn't mean countertops are dangerous, but it shows in generally unclean areas, you have a greater chance of finding possibly dangerous bacteria. So what should you do to get rid of the ick? The nastiest things, sponges, are the easiest to fix. Just toss them in the microwave for two minutes so the heat can kill things, or put them in the dishwasher on the sanitized cycle with your dishes. Drains and sinks aren't so tough either. You can use bleach in the drains. That's, it'll smell up your house a little bit, but there's other non-bleach substitutes. But some areas are predictably icky. When was the last time you washed your coffee maker? That'd be the first question. I've never washed mine at home. But even popular single-serve coffee makers collect organisms. The ancillary area around the pod can harbor many organisms in our case, especially yeast and molds. Other areas are excusably difficult. I can understand the shower head might not be the easiest to clean. You have to take it off and dip it in something. But keep them in mind if you want to do a thorough cleaning. This is especially important for anyone with known allergies or serious medical problems. The more clean you can be around the home, the more likely you are to stay healthy and succeed in your studies. Now I've talked about our obsession with cleanliness and the idea that natural exposure to dirt and germs in the environment may help the developing immune system, but I'll just say 
in the case of many <laughs> college apartments, as far as it goes, they probably have a little too much of a good thing. It's gross. But you know that's one of my pet issues, so that you know that was going to be my question. The good news is we all probably had uh, living spaces that were dirty back in the day, but you grow out of it. You right. we develop. <laughs> right? You can develop out of it, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, a lot of these same things apply at home, normal houses. Yes. So you know, the main thing is knowing where to keep clean so that you can avoid the infections and germs and that kind of thing is really the best thing. Yep. Yeah. All right, Doc, we appreciate mm -hmm. it. Trying to picture, I'm sure there was a bottle of 409 somewhere in my dorm room. I just can't remember where I kept it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never used it. <laughs> we all survived it. It's fine. Uh, let's uh, look ahead to things that have cooled off a bit after our uh, very strangely warm day. We saw the kids down river at that yeah. uh, holiday event. They were all bundled up, so it's yeah. certainly getting cooler. <laughs> and even though it's a sort of a drastic change, it's just really average for this time of year. We've been sort of living right here for the last <laughs> several days. And Spoiled. We've been yeah. living a lie. <laughs> well, yes, and that's coming to a crashing halt tonight. Uh, 41 is where we're at right now. This, uh, by the way, is very close, just a degree off of our average high this time of year. So really, we haven't sort of gotten into that uh, seasonable chill just yet. Right now, the wind chills at 33 with that 16 mile an hour wind. It is going to be breezy over the next couple days. And with that drop in temperatures, this is more like how things are going to feel in the afternoon at the height of our sort of peak heating tomorrow. But you can see back to the west, 30s pretty much all over the place right now. And this is, we close the book on November, likely going to be our fifth warmest November on record here in Detroit. And you can see the first two there, pretty close at 47.9, uh, 47.6, and then uh, three, four, and five, only a tenth of a degree apart. Uh, so not much separating those uh, from 1902 to 1975 to this year here in 2016. We're watching a couple of those sprinkles coming in off the lake. This is lake effect. Uh, showers uh, as the colder air comes over those warmer lake waters. Most of that is not going to make it on this side of the state, but if it does and we get towards morning where temperatures are going to be in the 30s, especially in our north zone, could see a couple snowflakes out there. Nothing significant, no accumulation expected. And then in the afternoon, some of that moisture may be in the form of sprinkles, but generally uh, we are going to stay dry uh, for the most part as we get into the next several days until we get towards the end of the weekend. So tonight temperatures would be dropping right to around 38 for an overnight low. Winds will be noticeable, uh, as we said earlier, 10 to 15 miles an hour tonight and even higher as we get into the afternoon. This is going to be one of those days where our four zone forecast not going to show a whole lot of variation across the area. Generally low 40s is pretty much what we're expecting. Uh, anywhere between 42 in the city to 41 across our entire south zone to 40 or 41. Take your pick here in our west and north zones for high temperatures tomorrow. Feeling more like the low 30s though when you factor in those wind speeds are going to be close to 20 miles an hour. But temperatures really hugging that average line all the way through the start of next week. We start to see a little bit of a spike in temperatures there Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we will get some sunshine here to start the weekend, but the end of the weekend on Sunday, that's when it's going to start to feel and look more yeah. like December. A little bit of rain. Could be a little snow. interesting there in the end of Could the day. Be, yeah. All right, Ben. Well, they've been uh, manageable for a while, but brace yourself. Gas price is about to go back up. All right, we'll have that coming up in highway shooting. Someone opens fire on a freeway, sending a couple to the hospital. Because sometimes a uh, major freeway closed for hours today after a shooting left two people injured and their car riddled with bullets. Police responded to a call that a man and a woman had been shot while driving down a freeway in Oakland, California. Police are not yet sure who opened fire, nor are they sure why, but they investigated a white car that had been abandoned in the middle of the road. The couple is in stable condition tonight. A man gets pinned inside his SUV after it veers off the road and slams into some trees in Connecticut. Two officers happen to drive by just in time. Hey, cop, can you get out of here? Come on, let's go. Come on, come on to the back seat. Come on, bro, you got to get out of the car. Let's go. Give me a hand. Well, the officers used fire extinguishers to keep the flames at bay until they could get in the car and free him. They got him out before the SUV went up in flames. The man and officers are recovering from just minor injuries.
We're going to start seeing higher prices at the pump. Oil production is going to be reduced starting in January. So AAA says that's a move to increase demand because of an overabundance of gasoline has been keeping prices down, which we, of course, have all enjoyed. Current average in Michigan, $2.24. That's up from last week when it was $2.09. Remember the good old days of 2015? It was a buck 80 this time last year. Analysts believe prices are going to increase by at least 13 cents when they start to move up. Interesting uh, example of cruel and unusual punishment, perhaps some would say. In the Canadian town of Kensington, which is way out there on Prince Edward Island, police posted a warning to Facebook. If you are arrested for drinking and driving, you will not only pay a fine, you'll also be forced to listen to Nickelback while they haul you off to jail. They could stop. They could stop. Oh, no. No. Well, the police say they're trying to get an age-old message across in somewhat of a different way, I guess. 2011, Nickelback <laughs> performed, uh, remember at the Lions Thanksgiving halftime show, and fans petitioned uh, to get that changed, if you recall. Uh, it seems like a lot of folks going a long way to hate on Nickelback. But that's from the place that gave us Anne of Green Gables. What happened to the cynicism? Where's PEI nowadays? Still playing. It's still, no, <laughs> no it's not. You're just they're here. They're torturing us. It's cruel and unusual, exactly. <laughs>